Welcome to 5 Minutes to Code, Programming Basics with your host Matthew C. Applegate. In this series, we are going to look at the fundamentals of computer programming. So whether you are hoping to program in Python, to code in C Sharp, or to develop in Java, these short guides should help you get to grips with the basics to get started. You won't need to download or install any software, so just sit back and enjoy. In this series, we are going to be looking at sequence, selection, and iteration, as well as pseudocode and flowcharts. Today, we are going to look at pseudocode. So let's look at this in more detail. Okay, here is an example program written in pseudocode. It both does and doesn't look like a computer program. The syntax is similar to most high-level computer languages, but at the same time, doesn't have the exact syntax. Pseudocode is often referred to as a syntactical representation of a program. Why do people use pseudocode? Well, it has two very useful uses. Firstly, it can be used to help non-programmers understand what is happening in a program. The second use for pseudocode is for when programmers are trying to debug and solve a logic error in a computer program. As it is closer to spoken language, it often helps programmers find where the program is going wrong. Let's look at our first program in pseudocode. Okay, the first line is pretty straightforward. It is a comment. A comment is ignored by the program and is used for us humans to read. It helps us remember what something does and if you are part of a team of programmers, it can help explain what it does to another programmer. The second line, the A variable is assigned the value of 10. This arrow means assignment. It is similar to a single equal symbol. In this case, A equals 10. The same thing is happening with B on the next line. However, B is being assigned 20. Line 4 totals A plus B together and assigns it to C. So C is now equal to 30. On line 5, D is being assigned C divided by 2. This effectively halves 30 to 15. So D is now being assigned 15. And finally, print D. This is an output command. It takes something from the computer program and shares it with the real world. It outputs the value of D to the screen, which in this case is 15. So there you go. You can have comments, variables, and outputs in pseudocode. But that is just the beginning. In fact, most things can be achieved in pseudocode. Let's look at another short program. This simple program takes four user inputs and adds it to the total at the end. The first line is a for loop, zero to four. The variable count is initially set to zero, and every time around the loop, it adds one to it until it gets to four, and then it breaks out of the loop. The first thing it does in the loop is to ask the user to type in an exam score. The next line, number equals user input, assigns the number that is input to the variable score. Following this, it adds it to the total variable by taking the existing total and adding the new score to it. It then calls next count, which effectively adds one to the value of count and goes around the loop again. Once it has done this four times, it creates the average by taking the total and dividing it by four and assigning it to the variable average. Finally, it prints the words the class average and the average as an output. So there you go. We have now added for loops and inputs to the mix. This is just a short guide to pseudocode. Now that you have the basics, don't hesitate to dig deeper into it and flowcharts as well, as they are very useful tools to use. You can check out other programming basic videos here and they will help you get started. I hope you have enjoyed the video, if you have, be sure to subscribe to my channel, like the video and comment below if you found it useful. If you want to get started in programming right away, be sure to check out my computer art programming tutorials here. Until next time, thanks for watching 5 Minutes to Code.